Hi everybody, welcome to Train Forever. I'm Andrew Barr and today we're talking about the anatomical planes of movement with a focus on their importance to exercise and training program design. If you work out regularly, this is essential knowledge that can help you achieve your performance potential and stay injury free. Today, I'm going to cover what the three planes of movement are, why they're important, and how you can build them into your program. The three planes of movement are the sagittal plane, which is forwards and backwards, the frontal plane, which is side to side, and the transverse plane, which is rotation. Life happens in all three planes, and most human movement involves a combination of the three. Think about a day-to-day -day task like taking groceries out of the trunk of your car. Depending on the movement strategy you use, that's going to involve some combination of flexing, extending, twisting, you know, movement across all three planes. And the same is true for sport. Most athletic movements involve a combination of the three. Think about stealing second base, taking a slap shot, evading a defender. The fact is that human movement and athletic movement takes place in all three planes, so we need to be able to move and be strong and resilient across all three. The issue is that most traditional strength training exercises are sagittal plane exercises. Squats, deadlifts, lunges, presses, rows, curls, you name it. All of these are based primarily in the sagittal plane. There is nothing wrong with training sagittal plane exercises. It is a great and important thing to be strong in the sagittal plane. And for most people, it makes sense to build your program on a foundation of sagittal plane exercises. But problems can occur when we completely neglect the frontal and the transverse plane, which unfortunately, most people do. Just like a muscular imbalance can increase your risk of injury and limit your ability to get strong, so too can an imbalance in your ability to move across all three planes. Great examples of frontal plane or side-to-side -side dominant exercises are lateral squats and lateral lunges. And there are a ton of plyometric exercises that are frontal plane dominant too. As for the transverse plane, a great example there would be a rotational med ball throw. And then at the other end of the continuum, a lot of the thoracic spine mobility drills that are popular and great to use during warmups, those are often transverse plane movements too. If you're finding this content useful and informative, go ahead and give me a like and make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss another training tip. I'll be putting out a new video each week to help you get the most out of your training sessions. Thanks so much. I really appreciate your support. So now we understand what each of the planes are and how to move through each. But there are a few additional things that we need to know to really have a solid understanding of this concept. The first is that no movement truly exists in one plane only. Let's take the squat, for example. Totally a sagittal plane-based exercise. But one of the things that we might do in successful squatting is drive the knees out. Well, those knees moving outwards to the side, that's movement in the frontal plane. And the movement at the hip that makes that movement at the knee possible, that is movement in the transverse plane. So rather than labeling an exercise as being exclusively in one plane, it might make more sense to categorize them as sagittal plane dominant or frontal plane dominant. And when we're building our program, we want to make a point to include exercises that are frontal plane dominant and transverse plane dominant, in addition to our normal foundation of work in the sagittal plane. Next is that you don't actually have to move to train the body in a particular plane. Moving involves producing force. We also need to be able to resist force. A great example of this is the side plank. Absolutely 100% a frontal plane dominant exercise that doesn't involve any movement. When we do a side plank, we are resisting side to side forces and therefore getting stronger in the frontal plane. The last concept is that anything done on one leg is a three plane exercise. This might sound confusing, maybe even incorrect, but this idea of resisting forces can help us make sense of it. When we stand on one leg, the muscles of the hip and the pelvis have to work to control the hip and pelvis and to keep it square and level. And to do so, it must resist against rotational forces. Not being able to control the pelvis is a serious risk factor for injury and can really limit your athletic potential. This is one of, why, one of many reasons why single leg training is so important. Here are some strategies to intelligently build training across all three planes into your training program. Since single leg training is training in all three planes, it makes a lot of sense to include single leg training in your program. 
exercises like skater squats, one leg sit to stands, various lunge types, and single leg hops, jumps, and bounds are all great options, as long as they can be done safely and pain-free. Another strategy is to use your warm-up to get some work in all three planes. Movements like thoracic rotation drills, lateral squats, and hip air planes can help make sure that you're getting at least a baseline of movement across all three planes. Your direct core training is another great opportunity to get some work across all three planes into your program. Movements like cable chop variations, dynamic planks, dynamic side planks, suitcase carries, and bird dogs are all great options. Different types of people need different amounts of work in each plane. Rotational sport athletes, like baseball players and golfers, need a lot of work in the transverse plane, for example. But if you're not a competitive athlete and you're training for general health and fitness purposes, even a small amount of work in each of the three planes, even just having an awareness that this is an important concept, can help put you on the path to long-term injury-free training. I hope you thought today's video was useful, and if you did, please give me a like and make sure you hit subscribe so you never miss another training tip. I'll be putting out a new video each week to help you get the most out of your training sessions. And if you head to the description, you can get my free guide to building core strength, a great way to develop strength and stability across all three, three planes, and it's completely free. And you can check out my online training programs and my one-on-one -on -one online coaching too. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week.